Hello, this is Jay Smith. Uh, I'm here in London. Today's the 1st of February, 2015. I want to speak tonight because of something that happened yesterday. Uh, you probably, some many of you know, if you watch the news, you know that these two men now have been executed. On the, here on the left, you see Kenji Goto. On the right, you see Harun Yukawa. And in the middle, of course, is Jihadi John. I want to talk about their story. Certainly, in the news, you're hearing all about it, but you're not hearing everything. And what you're not hearing is what I want to talk about tonight. You see, these two men are friends, the two on either side, Kenji and Harun, were friends. Uh, they met each other in April of 2014, just last year. Kenji Goto is a photojournalist, highly respected, spends much of his time on the front lines. I'll talk a little bit more about him. Harun Yukawa is not a photojournalist. He's a very troubled man. Has um, had a number of disasters that have happened in the last 10 years. A number of years ago, his wife died of cancer. His business w went bankrupt. He was in debt. He tried to commit suicide. And in the last year or two, he's been trying to redeem himself by going into dangerous zones, trying to become a, an expert in security which he has failed at as well. When he met Kenji, the two of them in April of last year went to Iraq and uh, Kenji tried to help him, tried to give him some help to understand how to work in secure areas, how to work behind lines in dangerous areas. Harun Yukawa has always had a troubled past. He was bullied when he was a young boy. He uh, started this firm then to try to create some type of comeback. These are pictures of him on his Facebook site holding an AK-47, but he was a very mild-mannered man. He even changed his name to Haruna, making it a feminine form. And uh, possibly that was one of the reasons why he was befriended by some of the Syrians there in Syria. It was obvious, however, that he needed help. Here's another picture of him. These are just pictures you can get on YouTube. The, I'm sorry. Uh, not YouTube, you can go up and get them on the internet, on most sites. Google them and you can find these pictures. There's nothing new. But then in August of last year, in August, I think 14th, he was then captured. The video came out, I don't want to show it, of him being captured. He, he was humiliated, pushed to the ground. Uh, he had long hair, straggly hair. And those who had captured him uh, were beating him up. When that came out all over the news, of course, Japan was forced into a conflict because then they were pulled into this conflict, having not been so beforehand. Kenji, meanwhile, was still doing his work, doing photographs. And what he loved to do, Kenji was well known for photographing children in dangerous zones, in war zones, to show the plight of children. And he would go back and tell their story, and that's why he became quite well known. He was very well loved by many other photojournalists because of his mannerisms. He was a very easygoing man, and we learn an awful lot about him. And the, the Japanese have learned to love him over the last few days. He was certainly not only well known for his photojournalism, but he was also well known. He had a wife, and in fact, had two children. Interestingly, in October of 2014, so just a few months ago, on the 24th of October, two weeks after his second child was born, he was in Turkey and he decided to go help Harun Yukawa. He wanted to help his friend that he had befriended in April of last year. And so he decided to cross the border into Syria to see if he could help. Even his translator was, a little, was fearful of him doing so. And so he didn't really tell any of his friends what he was doing. And then on the 25th of October, he was then captured there in Syria. And that was the last we heard of him. So now ISIS, who had captured him, now had two Japanese. And then a few, well, in December of last year, just before Christmas, this man was shot down. Some say he wasn't shot down, but certainly he lost his plane. He was an F-16 pilot. His name is Muat al Kasasbe. He was a pilot from Jordanian Air Force, shot down over 
Syria, and then captured by ISIS. Here's a picture of his capture. You can tell he has a broken lip. He was beat up a bit. Certainly, uh, this caused an awful, awful lot of uh, furore in Jordan itself, and many people in Jordan wanted him to be released, as you would expect, but they started turning on the government and even demanding that he be released. That was, brings us up then to January, this month, 2015. Here you can see a picture of Muat al Kasesbe as he's being captured. And here you see a picture of Kenji Goto. Harun Yukawa and Kenji Goto uh, were then became front and center. And a week ago, on the 24th of January, they executed Harun Yukawa. And the ISIS then demanded that in order for Kenji Goto to be released and also Muat al Kasesbe, this man here, this would have to free this woman here, Sajida al Rishawi. Sajida al Rishawi was a failed suicide bomber. She had tried to blow herself up about two years ago in 2012. And that was the deal. And of course, the Japanese government thought that maybe the deal would go through, and so did the Jordanian government up until Friday, just uh, two days ago. On the 30th of January, they thought that they, these both Kenji Goto and Moath al Kasesbe would be freed in exchange for this woman, Sajida al Rishawa. That didn't happen, obviously, because they could not provide, ISIS could not provide proof that Moath al Kasesbe was still alive. So yesterday, they executed Kenji Goto. Kenji Goto. Kenji Goto, the man on the left. Many people had tried to ask for his release all over Japan. He became a hero. People would uh, put signs up, free Kenji. Save his life, I am Kenji. This is now the new uh, slogan that is used. Just sweet Charlie has now been made into many slogans. I am whatever the name of the person that they would like to help. And that's become, probably will be, a, from here on out, that's what people will use. It didn't work. It didn't work. We just got news then today, actually last night, but this morning. That Kenji Goto, there in a valley, probably just north of Raqqa, there in Syria, with... Jihadi John in the background, standing behind him like he always does with his knife, mocking the West, mocking Japan, mocking the United States, and mocking Britain, anybody else that got in the way. After he mocked it, he then bent over and he beheaded Kenji Goto. Now that you all know, this is nothing new. This is what the news has sent out. What the news hasn't told you is that Kenji Goto is a Christian. You haven't heard that. BBC had one line, Times this morning, mentioned it in the very end of their article. It just so happened he was a Christian. But they didn't tell you why Kenji Goto went back to Syria. Why on October 24th he suddenly went across the border and disappeared on October 25th. They didn't tell you that he went there to save his friend, Haru Yukawa. This is the other side of the news that no one's talking about. This is the elephant in the room. When Peter Kasich was arrested, the American aid worker who then converted to Islam, took on an Arab name, uh, Muslim name, excuse me, that was all over the news. And almost every time you heard about Peter Kasich, you then always were told that he was a Muslim, he was a Muslim, he was a Muslim. No one bothered to tell you that Kenji Koto was a Christian has been a Christian since 1997, almost 20 years now. He went back into Iraq to save Harun Yukawa. His final video before he left, there on the 25th, while he was still in Syria, before he then was captured, was saying, please don't blame the Syrians. I take full responsibility for what I am doing. This man, Harun, does not deserve what's happening to him, and that is why he went to hopefully to try to get him released. That's the sacrifice of Kenji Goto that I would like to talk about today. What a beautiful man. Now, he's a hero in Japan. He's a hero for me as well. 
What greater love hath a man than to give his life for another? He's following his Savior's example. That's exactly what Jesus did for us. Jesus gave his life for us. Kenji Goto, knowing that possibly he could be killed. He was hoping, obviously, he wouldn't be, but he knew that he was certainly walking right in, possibly to a death, his own death, to save Harun Yukawa, who he'd only met in April of last year, but felt partly responsible for him still being there. That's the other side of the news that I wanted to bring tonight, and that's one of the, some ways, the saving grace of what did happen. It's unfortunately we've lost Kenji Goto, but I hope we haven't lost his act. We hope we haven't last, lost the motivation behind what he did. And I hope you realize that what Kenji was doing is what Jesus did for us already, and that's why he's following the example of his Savior. And I just want to thank him for that. Another life lost. But let's not forget why he did it. And let's not forget whose example he used to come to that conclusion. Okay then, this is Jay, over and out, here in London.